so to get started here, I'm going to start mixing Ling's skin tone. Um, since he has really pale skin, I'm going to start using a burnt sienna as the main color. So once I get that in, there we go. Just a little bit. You don't want too much paint. Since this is watercolor, I can mix it the way I want it. So I got that one down. So the second color I'm planning on using is a gouache blush tint. So since this is a gouache, it's going to be a little more thicker, um, but I can mix it well with my other watercolors. So there we go. Just just a little bit. We don't want too much. So the final third color I'm going to use to mix the skin tone will have to be a Potter's Pink. This is a gray color. It's not too pink, not too red. Just, just right. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. Okay, since I got that done, I'm going to start mixing the three colors together to come up with his skin tone. So not too much, just a little bit of mixing. And then with a big brush with a lot of water, I'm going to cover his face, neck, and ears. I want to make sure everything's nice and wet. Um, I don't want it to dry too quickly because I'm going to use a piece of paper towel. Um, just a little bit. I'm going to dab part of his face where it's going to be a lighter tone, so like his um, forehead, nose, cheeks, eyes, especially his eyes since they're going to be a bright blue, I don't want to make it too foggy. With Potter's Pink, I'm going to start layering his face for a little more dimension. Um, I like using Potter's Pink for blushing. I love body blushing, it's my favorite thing. So when I get that down, I'm going to start with a smaller brush to do some feather shading. Well, sorry, I mean shading. There we go. <laughs> so just a little bit. I like using purple for um, a little shading. It's not too harsh and it's not too light. So just, I'm going to start putting dimension in this face. Just so you can see what's going to happen soon. So with a little bit of blue, I'm going to put a little bit of life in his eyes. Here, just a little. There we go. <laughs> So when I got that down, um, I am going to start coloring his hair. Um, he kind of has like a dirty blonde, so I'm just going to mix some yellow and some other random colors I have going on here. So I'm just going to cover his whole hair with the one color first. Um, I want to make sure it's super wet so I can take some off with the paper towel. Um, especially for the shiny bits, I want to know what that's going to happen. I'm going to continue. I'm using a bigger brush. You probably should use a smaller brush. It'd be easier, especially with all the bangs. But um, I'm going to start a little bit with the same color to put a little more dimension, a little more shading in it. I'm going to get that done and just let it dry for a bit. Um, next, I'm going to do a little more defined shading around his eyes. Since Link has those really big eyes and those gorgeous long lashes, I'm just going to start defining his face. A little more blushing. I'm using a different color than the Potter's Pink. I want a little bit more of red um, for his forehead, chin, cheeks, nose, you name it. Now with a bigger brush, I'm going to start doing the background. So I mixed some purple and like a dark blue. I want like a darker background. Um, I'm also going to use the color to put in more of a darker shadow in his face. So I'm going to blend it really well. As you can see, I'm putting some dimension in the background because I'm going to put some fireflies in there. And I don't want the fireflies to be too dark, obviously, since they're going to be light up. Um, so I'm just going to put a thick yellow. Um, so I'm actually working with wet on wet, as you can see. Um, this is a good process, except that I have to make th let things dry, which can take a little time. So I'm going to continue coloring in the background. And having it blend into his face, especially since the light source is going to be in front of him, the shading is going to be more on the back side. See, with the same color, I'm starting to pull a more definition in the shades. I'm going to put a little bit of color in his lips, starting to get that more out. Um, I'm trying to bring out his face a little more with a more of the gouache color I'm using to give more of uh, more dimension. So now since the background's more dry, I'm going to continue darkening up the back area. Um, just because I'm using wet on wet, um, I tend to go back and forth with different things because I need I need the paint to dry before I could do any more detail or else it's just going to have that wet 
weird effect. So this is an indigo color I'm using. I'm going to use this color for his shirt since now he's wearing the kind of a royal blue shirt in the series. So again with the same process I'm just going to nice and wet the, his whole shirt with the blue. Um, I, since I didn't draw the full figure I'm just going to have a vignetting. Um, if you know what vignetting, vignetting is, it's when you let the paint nicely kind of blend in with the background. I want him to have like a very dreamy effect, so I'm just going to continue doing this. Especially since the paint is so wet, I'm just going to play around with it. I have the freedom to do so. Okay, now I'm going to start using a black Prismacolor pen since his face is dried. I'm going to start outlining his eyes. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of outlining. I don't want it too, too thick because um, I don't know how thick I want his eyes to be. So I'm going to do his eyes, his nose, his lips, and cheeks. But as you can see, the black is very, very overpowering. So I like doing this process in the middle of painting. That way I can blend in the paint better with the outlines. The dark brown color, I'm just going to start defining his eyebrows. Um, since he has really big, very dramatic eyebrows, I want to get that layered on. Then I'm going to start doing a little more shading in his eyes. The eyes are going to take me a little longer because I want it to dry properly and I don't want to overdo it in one go. Then with a, a brown Prismacolor pen, I'm going to start inking his hair. Um, I like using brown more because it's not as bright or as dramatic as the black and I can easily blend it in. So with that going, I'm also going to use more brown, same color I used for his eyebrows to put more shading in his hair. I'm also mixing the purple, the same color as the background with a little bit of red to put more de definition in the shading. Because the light source is on his left side, I want it to be more harsh. Okay, now so I'm using a zebra black pen. It's a Japanese pen. Um, I used it to define his eyes more and then I'm going to blend in with a darker blue with his eyes and his chin and neck. A little bit more purple around his eyes, a little more shading there. I'm going to just start using the red again to start popping out a little body blush. And as I said, I really love body blushing. It's my favorite thing to do. I'm just repeating the same process again. Okay, I'm going to start coloring his undershirt. His undershirt is a very similar color um, of his skin tone. So I'm just going to do a little bit and then I'll define it more. Using the brown prism color pen, I'm just going to put a little more definition in his face and his eyes. Low eyelids. I'm also going to be using a thick um, permanent marker for the back of his head since it's going to be much darker back there. Using the zebra pen, I'm just going to outline his bangs a little more. And then I'm going to outline his eyebrows a little bit with the brown Prismacolor pen. Okay, now I'm going to start doing a little detail on his undershirt using the red and green to get a little more detail going. Okay, I'm going to put a little more on life in his eyes, a little more darker, get that developed more. And then I'm going to start using a little bit of the pen to define his bangs. Okay, now using wet on wet, I'm starting to develop more of the background. So first I did, I really put wet on the little dots and I use a bright orange to mix that in. I'm going to use the vignetting technique to make more like a fiery feature. Just continue with the wet on wet. Um, make sure it doesn't dry too fast so I can play around with it. I'm going to start putting a little more outline in his eyes and his hair. Okay, now I'm going to start using a um, white wash. This is a titanium white. I can't even say that word. I'm not quite sure what brand this is. It looks like a Japanese brand. So with a small brush, I'm going to start um, putting little dots in his eyes, face, chin, nose. Anything that's going to reflect off the light from the light source. I'm going to blend a little bit in. I don't want like a harsh um, white going on. Okay, now I'm just going to um, dry up a little bit of the background because I want to put a little bit of the gouache in the little fireflies. Make it look more dimensional. Um, I'm going to continue this with the wet. I'm also going to put a little bit more of dots everywhere to look more like a very fantastical scene going on. He's just looking up into the sky. With that, the process is done. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed.
please like or comment, or if you have any suggestions, please message me. Till then, see you next time.